Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're all doing great and today I'm gonna continue with the second part of the Garden of the Accolade. So, we're beginning. Aunt Malindi objected to the mission at so late an hour, denouncing, denouncing, it as foolish and unnecessary, but Uncle Bushard was not to be deflected from a duty, deflected. I don't tell, I don't tell Sister Adeline Hoskins, he said, to come by here for that book tomorrow, tomorrow mo mo morning, morning at seven o'clock for to quarter to, to the meeting of the board of the regiments regiments and that book when want to be here when she come so uncle bashard put on his old brown suit got his stick hey hey carry stick and mindered, mindered through the almost desert, deserted streets, deserted streets of the Wayman Well. He entered the bank, unlocking the side door, and found the passbook where he had left in it in the la little black room used for private consultations, where he always hung his coat. Looking about ca casually, he saw the, that everything was as he had left it and was about to start for home when he was brought to a standstill by the sudden rattle of a key in the front door. Someone came quickly in, closed the door softly and entered the counting room through the door in the iron railing. That division of the bank space was connected with the back, back room by, by a narrow passageway. Now in da deep darkness, Uncle Bushard, firmly gripping his hickory stick, tiptoed gently up this passage, passage until he could see the midnight intruder into the scared pre pre persons scared persons the of the of the Waymont bank one dim gas jet burned there but even in its nebulous light nebulous Nebulous light. He perceived at once that the pr prowler, 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 was the bank's president. Wondering, fearful, undecided, undecided what to do, the old colored man stood motionless in the gloomy strip of the hallway and waited developments. The world, with its big iron door, was opposite him. Inside it was the safe, holding the papers of value, the gold and currency of the bank. On the floor of the vault was perhaps $18,000 in silver. The president took his key from his pocket, opened the vault and went inside, nearly was in the door behind him. Uncle Bashard saw through the narrow ap ap aperture the flicker of a candle. In a minute or two it seemed to and seemed an hour to the watcher, Miss Mr Mr Robert came out bringing he bringing with him a large hand sa satchel. Satchel. 
hanging it in a careful but but hurried manner as if fearful that he might be observed with one hand he closed and locked the wall door with the rag ral ralu reluctant theory reluctant theory forming itself in beneath his wool uncle bashard waited and watched shaking in his concealing shadow mr roberts sat this sa satchel softly up on the desk and turned his coat collar up about about his neck and ears he was dressed in a rough suit of gray and if for traveling as if for traveling he glanced with fro fro frowning intentness intentness at the big office clock above the bring burning jet gas jet and that looked linger Linger, lingeringly, lingeringly, about the bank. Linger, lingeringly, ringlingly, lingeringly, and fondly. Uncle Bashford's thought, as one who, who bids fearful to dear and familiar scenes. Scenes. Now he caught up his burden again and moved promptly and softly out of the bank by the way of way he had come locking the front door behind him for a minute or longer uncle bashard was as stone in his tracks had that midnight riffler of safes and worlds been any other on earth than the man he was the old retainer would have ru rushed upon him and stuck struck to save the waymouth property but now the watcher's soul was tortured tortured by the po poignant poignant dread dread po poignant dread of something worse than mere robbery mere robbery he was seized by an accusing terror that said the weymouth name and the weymouth honor were about to be lost mars robber robbing mars robbing robert robbing the bank what else could it mean the hour of the night the stealthy visit to the world this satchel brought for 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 full and with expedition and sign silence the prowler's rough dress prowler's rough dress his salacious salacious reading of the clock and noiseless departure what else could it mean and then to to the turmoil turmoil the uncle busher thoughts came the co corroborate corroborating recollection of preceding events mr roberts increasing in tem in temperance in temperance and consequent many more many moods of royal high spirits and stern tempers the casual talk he had heard in the bank of the decrease in business and difficulty in collecting loans what else could it all mean but the mr roberts waymouth was as absconder an absconder absconder no idea what it is was about to fly with the bank's remaining funds leaving mr william miss lady 
little Nan, Guy and the Uncle Busher to bear the disgrace. During one minute, Uncle Busher considered these things and then he awoke to sudden determination and action. All right, guys, the action goes on and we're going to continue tomorrow with the third part of this great story by O. Henry. So see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining me today and bye.